Okay, this is the cladogram on the homework sheet, and honestly, it's a lot harder than I really wanted it to be, so I'm going to actually give you a walkthrough of it. For starters, um, I put a note in the actual assignment to skip the snake and put the snake in last. So we're going to ignore the snake. We're going to kind of pretend like it's not even here because um, the snake is going to cause problems. All right. So uh, a reminder how we do cladograms. We are going to either start with an organism that has no traits at all, and our organisms are across the top, or we're going to start with a trait that every organism has, because our cladogram is sort of like a family tree. So we're either starting with a, tra a trait that's a primitive trait that everyone, everyone has in the tree, or we're going to start with an outgroup, an organism that doesn't have any of the traits, and he's going to be first. So in this particular tree, you'll notice that there is an organism, the worm, who does not have any of the traits. So we're going to place him as our very first organism on this tree. So here's our worm, and I'm actually going to do this. This tree, like I said, is actually a lot harder than I really uh, wanted it to be. Um, so, okay. So now that we've placed the worm, we're going to go across and look for traits. Now the traits are just numbers on this tree. So is there a trait, now that we've got our worm crossed off, that everybody else has? And if you'll notice, trait number one, everybody else has. So we're going to put a one here, showing that trait number one, which we have now covered, so we cross that out, everybody has trait one. Everybody passed the worm. Okay, now that we've crossed out trait one, is there an organism that doesn't have anything past that? And that's going to be our next organism. And in this particular tree, you're going to see that there is not one. I don't have an organism that has all zeros. Now, this can happen. So the closest thing we have to an organism with all zeros is the shark. He has, but he has a one for trait number six. But here's the thing. If you notice trait number six, nobody else has it. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to put our shark here. And we're going to give the shark trait number six. In other words, this is a trait that's unique just to the shark. And he doesn't have anything else past that. Um, so we're going to cross off trait number six. And we're going to cross off the shark. And now we're going to move on. So our next thing we're going to be looking for now is a trait that everybody else has. So do we have a trait everyone has? And yes, we do if we ignore the snake. Trait number two, everybody has. So we're going to add trait two here, cross that off. Now do we have an organism that doesn't have anything past trait number two? And again, just like with the shark, we don't. We don't have an organism with all zeros the rest of the way. But the closest thing we have is the mammal who does have trait number five, but again, he's the only one with trait number five. So we're going to put our mammal here. And again, this is pretty sloppy. Um, and we're going to put trait number five here on the mammal, showing that he's the only one with that trait, and that eliminates the mammal and trait number five. So we've done trait two, six, five. Okay. Um, so now we are back to a trait. So a trait that everybody else has would be trait number three. Everybody has, everybody past the mammal has trait number three. Cross three off. And now uh, do we have an organism that doesn't have anything past trait three? No, but we have two organisms, the crocodile and the lizard, and they both have a unique trait that only they have. So again, this is ridiculously difficult. Um, I don't think they'd give you one like this. So this is how I'm gonna represent this. There's actually multiple ways, but I'm gonna put the croc here, and I'm gonna put the lizard here, um, and I am going to give the lizard trait number four, because he's the only one that has that. And the crocodile is going to get trait number seven, because he's the only one that has that. So we're going to cross off the crocodile and the lizard. And then we're also crossing off trait number four. And we're crossing off trait number seven. And that leaves us with our last trait, which would be trait number eight, which would go here. And then our last organism would be the bird. Now, again, on the AP exam, um, the last few times I've seen these, first of all, they were much easier ones. Second of all, they've always given a template. So all you had to do was sort of fill in the blanks on the tree. You didn't have to draw a tree from scratch. Now, let's go back to the snake for a second because this actually will um, 
clarify something that we talked about before, this, this idea of maximum parsimony. So if I look at the snake, I'm going to erase all my, all my marks on him, and let's look at what traits the snake has. So he has trait number one, he has trait number three, and he has trait number four. So the snake has these three traits, one, three, and four. Now, if we have to place the snake in here, let's see if there's a spot. Well, here's the thing. Okay, here's trait one, and after trait one comes two, but he doesn't have two. So one option, I'll put it in a different color, would be to put the snake here. And we could say that the snake has trait one, and then it acquired also traits three and four. Those were the other two traits it had. Now, what does that imply? What that implies is that even though three and four are here and here, that the snake also got these traits, and these would be what an example of convergent evolution or analogous structures, meaning the snake also got those structures, but they did, it didn't get those structures by the same original mutation because of a common ancestor. It randomly got trait three, just like randomly trait three appeared here, it appeared also in the snake. And trait four appeared here and also appeared in the lizard. So this is one option. Now, what's our other option? What Okay, so our other option is this. The snake has traits one, three, and four. So here's one. Oops, sorry about that. Here is one, here is three, here is four. So we could put the snake over here with the lizard. But the snake does not have trait two. In other words, other than trait two, the snake fits with the lizard. One, three, four, but it doesn't have two. So we would put a negative two here showing it lost trait two. Now, how do we decide which of these is the better option? Well, here's the thing. Remember in the lecture, I talked about what was called maximum parsimony. Maximum parsimony says that if we believe that these trees came about by random mutations through evolution, that it's gonna make the most sense the tree that's going to make the most sense is going to be the tree that requires the least number of changes. In other words, the least number of mutations to happen. So would it make more sense that trait three and trait four randomly appear twice in this tree? Or would it make more sense that trait two disappeared one time? And so the answer would be that it would make more sense to place the snake here with the lizard that trait two was lost by the snake. And that, that random mutation happened once versus the appearance of two traits um, occurring. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's what they mean by maximum parsimony. You wanna look for the tree that would have required the least number of changes. That's gonna make more sense. Now, my guess is that these traits are all just numbers, but if, if you wanted to apply it to real traits, I'm thinking that no, trait number two might actually in real life have represented legs. And that would make sense that, yeah, originally the snake came from an ancestor that had legs. Legs appeared here after the shark um, because the shark, the worm doesn't have legs. The shark lives in water. It doesn't have legs. Legs appeared as organisms moved to land. And then over time, um, you know, all these organisms past this point had legs but a mutation happened and the snake lost the legs. And so that would be the tree that would make the most sense. So again, this is actually a, a very difficult cladogram and I seriously doubt they would give you something this, um, this difficult on the AP exam, but I wanted to give you a walkthrough of it since it is on your homework sheet.